Psalm 55, I want to read verses 1 through 8 to start with. <clears throat> so Psalm 55, starting at verse number 1. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Now let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, we thank you again for this evening. Thank you, Father, for the day that you brought us through. Thank you, Father, for the songs that we sung, what encouraging songs they are. Remind us of just your goodness. Remind us of our relationship with the Lord. And, Father, we just we thank you for the relationship we have. And, Father, the fact that you do walk with us and talk with us daily. And, Father, thank you that, uh, Lord, you care so much about us. Father, thank you that we have this opportunity on a Wednesday, uh, Lord, to be gathered together. I do pray that you'd minister to our hearts through your word. Pray that you would guide us according to your will. As always, Lord, speak to the hearts of the children in Kid Venture. Help them, Lord, to understand the Bible lesson. Help them have fun with the games. Uh, Lord, just ask that you would watch over them and just guide their steps throughout their life. And, Father, would you do the same for us? Continue, Lord, to guide our steps. Continue to help us to faithfully trust you and to follow you. Uh, Lord, knowing that uh, you have thoughts of peace towards us, knowing that you, uh, Lord, uh, Father, you, your thoughts of peace towards us, but the fact that, Lord, you even think about us. What a wonderful truth that is, because obviously, Lord, we're your children. Father, I ask that you would please bless our time, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now, without reading all of Psalm 55, Psalm 55 was written by David. And David was a man that was acquainted with grief, acquainted with trials, but yet he's also known as a man after God's own heart. He had a very personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, and that is what helped him through the life's trials that he would go through uh, before being the king, during uh, the time he was king over Israel. And uh, just in these verses, again, we just see where he talks about uh, just the burdens of life and uh, the fact that the Lord would help him through it. I want you, though, to skip down to verse 22, because uh, I want to focus on 22 tonight. I read verses 1 through 8, uh, just to even remind us in, in verses 6 through 8, you know, David just talks about being able to just escape and to get away from uh, the burdens of life. And in, in his case, the burden he had was obviously uh, King Saul trying to kill him, just the enemies that would surround him. And there's just the burdens of life that we have. And sometimes I even want to say this before I even read verses 6 through 8 again, is that sometimes the burdens of life that we have aren't necessarily uh, the wrong burdens, not necessarily enemies or uh, that are against us or trials that we're in the midst of, storms we're battling through. Sometimes the burdens of lighter life are just the responsibilities that we have. Sometimes the responsibilities that we have in life can seem like a burden because, you know, we don't always have the right answer uh, in ourself on how to handle responsibilities. Sometimes responsibilities for a single parent you know, it, it pretty much it all lays upon them where they're trying to be the mother and the father. Uh, even just parents alone just trying to work a job and balance home life. And uh, again, whether you're married or not, it's just the, the things of life, the responsibilities in life. Uh, I've had to learn how to try to juggle home life, ministry, uh, a second job. And uh, I understand, you know, the burdens and struggles that you can have trying to balance life, trying to do what's right. And uh, here, there are times where, you know, we just want to get away from it all. Notice what David says again in verse 6. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. You know, David just talks about just getting away from the burdens, getting away from just the heaviness uh, of life, and sometimes just wanting to get away from responsibilities uh, to just get to time to kind of uh, reflect on things and try to recoup and, and regroup. Uh, that's why often we take vacations. 
I would take vacations throughout the year to try to get away from uh, the workplace and different things just to try to relax and to have fun, knowing you got to go back to it, but at least trying to get some time away from it, all right? And David says, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest, lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. So he adds that verse 8 there to let us know that the windy storm and tempest that is raging around him in life, that is what he wants to escape from. I would hasten my escape. If I had wings like a dove, I would get myself away from it so I was not bothered with it anymore. In verse 22, I want us to think about what he says here. We're going to break down verse 22, uh, which really is the answer to the rest of the psalm, verses 1 through 21. You find verse 22 is the answer to the burdens of life, whether they be the trials, whether they be responsibilities that seem to be just mounting up. But he says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That is the answer when we find ourselves overwhelmed in life. Again, whether it's because we're going through a trial, a storm, or just the responsibilities that, of life that we just, it seems like we're just not getting ahead on. I don't know if you've ever felt like every step you took forward, it feels like you took two steps backward. There's just sometimes in life it feels like where you're trying to, you're trying to gain on some things, you're trying to get ahead in life, and it seems like every step you take, you end up falling two steps back. Again, that's, that's just the way life is, and this is how we can handle life. We can handle uh, the burdens or the responsibilities of life, and that is by casting thy burden upon the Lord. That is step number one. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and just to remind us, burden simply means load, that which is born with labor or difficulty, all right? Again, it, it might be a trial, it might just be responsibilities in life, all right? But the psalmist, David says, that, and he learned this himself by experience and by patience waiting on the Lord, cast thy burden upon the Lord. And how can we do that? How is the most effective way to cast our burden upon the Lord. If you would, go back up to verse 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17 in the same chapter, David writes these words, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. David believes that calling upon the Lord or praying to the Lord, casting his care upon the Lord, the Lord will hear him, and the Lord will help him. Because he says, and the Lord shall save me. That shall means it's definite. It is, it's not, I hope so. It's not maybe, but it's, he is for sure that when he calls upon God for God's help, that God will help him. He goes on, verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Prayer is another way that we can cast our care upon the Lord. You're familiar with 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, where it tells us, casting all your care upon the Lord, for he careth for you. In fact, that's not verse 7. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. Maybe it is. <clears throat> it is. I'm thinking, I was thinking of verse 8. But verse 7 is, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I mean, the first thing that we can remind ourselves when we feel overwhelmed with life is that the Lord does care about us, and the Lord does want us to come to him, to cast our care upon him, and to know that we can cast our burden upon the Lord through prayer. We know that God hears us, and we know if God hears us that he will help us. I want you to look at some verses, though, in Psalm. Uh, go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27, because we do still have to remind ourselves that as we are asking the Lord for his help, we still have to remember to wait on the Lord. We're trusting the Lord, we're, we're asking the Lord for help, 
In the same time, we know that the Lord knows what's best. We know the Lord knows how to answer every prayer. That he knows how to help us in every situation. And even, again, whether it's, not a, whether it's a trial or whether it's just responsibility in life that we're trying to get a hang of, we're trying to get a hold of it, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to accomplish it, yet we still need the Lord's help. In Psalm 27 and verse 14, the Bible says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So another way that we do cast our burden upon the Lord is waiting for him. Waiting for him. I don't know if you've ever been worried about something. If something has kept you up at night, you just couldn't get it out of your mind. It was something you had to deal with, something that you had to work through. And no matter how much sleep you lost, no matter how much effort you put into thinking and trying to come up with a solution, you just couldn't. And that does weigh heavy upon you. It weighs heavy upon anybody that cannot come up with a solution. And then our last effort sometimes is to cast it at the Lord and say, here, Lord, it's broken. Will you fix it? I mean, it's like a child coming to a, a parent with a broken toy because somehow they broke it, but they know, you know what, if anyone can fix it, mom and dad can fix it. And they bring it, and they're expecting it to be fixed. They're, they're just believing that, they can fix it. And again, the parent wants to be the hero and fix whatever it is. But the child has to be willing to bring it to the parent, trusting that the parent can fix it. It's the same with us. We have to believe that we can take it to the Lord, and the Lord will fix it. And it, you know, he may not fix it right on the spot. Sometimes, you know, whatever the toy is that's broken that a parent needs to fix, can't fix it in a split second. It takes time, whether you got to glue it back together and let the glue dry. What I'm saying is often we forget that God's timing is right, and God's solution is always the perfect solution, and sometimes he wants us to wait because while he's going to help us in the situation that we have, the burden, the responsibility we need help with, he wants to work on us as well. And that's why David, even in Psalm 27, says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Because God always is working on us, and God always wants our faith to increase. He always wants our heart to become stronger in trusting him and relying upon him. And he goes on to say, Wait, I say, on the Lord. So when we cast our burdens upon the Lord, we've got to wait for the Lord to take care of it, trusting that he will. Look at Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and verse 5. So while we do believe in prayer and we do pray about things and we do believe and trust that God hears us and will help us, we have to learn to wait. And while we're waiting, make sure that we've committed that burden to the Lord that seems to be weighing heavy upon us. Psalm 37 and verse 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Uh, there are many things that we commit unto people, but God is the God of the impossibilities. He's the one that we can commit every area of our life to, and he has all the answers for. And he wants to help us. He wants to guide us through our life. He wants us not to be burdened down with trials or even responsibilities. We all have responsibilities that we should be, again, as a father, as a pastor, uh, as, as, a, as a worker at another company, you know, a father, a husband, a pastor, you know, an employee somewhere else. I have responsibilities that are expected of me but I've learned that, you know what, I can't fulfill any of those responsibilities without the Lord helping me. And any number of those responsibilities at different times can become overwhelming. Because while, again, while I have one responsibility, just like you, you have other responsibilities that you're trying to take care of. 
And again, the, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, always wants us to feel under pressure, wants us to feel so burdened that we just we give up on the Lord, so burdened that we become crushed under the load instead of casting it to the Lord, trusting that the Lord will help us. And again, that's where we have to commit our way unto the Lord while waiting on him. And while we are waiting on him and committing it to the Lord, we truly have to rely upon hope. Look at Psalm 42. Because what is my hope in? My ability, someone else's ability, or the Lord's ability to help me? In Psalm 42, verses 10 and 11, the Bible says, As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. And again, Think about it. We do have an adversary that's always reproaching us, always resisting us, always fighting against us. While they say daily unto me, where is thy God? You may not have someone verbally say that to you. Sometimes you may have someone say that to you like, where is your God? I mean, you've got all this stress. Where's the one that you trust? But often you will have your enemy, your spiritual enemy, your adversary, the devil, always bring up in your mind as well as mine, but where is your God? Why isn't your God helping you? Why isn't your God keeping you from having these burdens? I mean, if he really loved you, uh, wouldn't he just let you have a life full of roses with no thorns? Wouldn't he just let you uh, have an easy life? Well, no, because then I've learned that, yes, I do want a perfect life where there is no problems, but I've learned that, you know what? If there's no problems in my life, I'll never have a need to go to the Lord, because everything's fine, everything's perfect. What do I need the Lord for? Unfortunately, a lot of people have that mindset that they don't need the Lord, but we learn over time that, you know what? I do need the Lord, because He sees my life. He sees where I'm at. He sees where I'm heading. He knows what this next, the next week entails. He knows what I'm going to be faced with, and He's already wanting to help me be prepared in trusting him, waiting on him, and hoping in him. Psalm 42, again, look at verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Understand? David is, David is saying, you know, he's talking to himself. And sometimes we do, you know, if you see someone talking to themselves in the mall or something, sometimes we think uh, they're, they're a little strange or talking to themselves. But you know what? Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you need to remind yourself that, you know what? Everything's okay. You know what? There is someone who truly does care, who truly is there for me 24-7, that I can call upon him no matter what time of day it is, and he has a solution. He has an answer for me. And sometimes while I'm having to wait on the solution, it's during that waiting time that I have fellowship with the Lord, and the Lord fellowships with me. Again, like David says, sometimes, you know what, we have to remind ourselves that let's look back to the one who loves us. Let's look back to the one who gave his entire life so that we would have an abundant life. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God, he's the reason why I have a smile on my face. He's the reason why I'm not worried about the storms of life or overwhelmed with responsibilities because I know that he will help me and I can count on him and I can tell him what's bothering me and he will listen. He will have a solution for me. And while I'm waiting on him, he encourages my heart. Uh, in Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Again, the Lord doesn't want any one of us to be burdened down with the cares of this life. He doesn't want us to be crushed under the load. He wants us to rely upon him. He wants us to come to him so that we will have rest, and that rest is to the soul because we're allowing the Lord to help us. Look back, if you would, at Psalm 55, and look at the second part of verse 22. Again, he says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall sustain thee. Sustain thee. That word sustain simply means to bear, 
to uphold, to support. He always will help bear your burden. He always will help uphold you. He will always be there to support you. Not every person can. Even the best efforts of somebody that loves you will fail at times because they cannot. I have talked to many people, married couples, where one spouse is struggling, the other spouse wants to help, and they say, I don't know what to do. I tried to encourage them, but it doesn't seem to help. I want to take away the problem. I want to take away the pain. I want to have the solution, but I don't know what to do. Not everybody will have a solution to what someone is going through, but God does, and God is the one that wants to support you, uphold you, and bear you up. Look at, um, look at verse 18, Psalm 55, verse 18, all right? He shall sustain thee, and he does it through his peace. He hath, in verse 18, he hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle. It is a battle that we're in. There's a spiritual battle that we are in, that we're fighting. Uh, we have, again, the responsibilities of life, the burdens of life that come up at times, and we feel overwhelmed, we feel like there is no peace, but yet God did deliver David, delivered his soul in peace. Because God gives that peace that passeth all understanding. The peace that we can have even in the midst of the storm. The peace that we can have knowing, you know what? The God of heaven who is my heavenly father, who is my savior, my redeemer, who knows my name and knows everything about me and loves me, wants me to experience his peace even when there is still a storm raging around me, even when I don't understand how something is going to end up, how something is going to work out, even when it seems like the world is against me, yet I have peace knowing that God is on my side. Look at Psalm 61 in verse 2. Psalm 61 in verse 2. I love the fact that the Bible says that he, speaking of God, shall sustain thee. It is God that holds us up. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. When you fall, he will hold you up. He's the one that picks you up. You see that time and time again throughout the Bible. When you read through the Bible, just time and time again in people's lives, God picks them up, God supports them, God helps them. And that is because he is their Lord, just as he is our Lord. In Psalm 61, look at verse uh, number 2. <clears throat> the, uh, David here says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that rock, obviously, is Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the one that upholds us. He's the one that supports us. He's the one that uh, bears us up and helps us through the storms of life and encourages us. Look at Psalm 40 and verse 2. Tonight is just a reminder, again, as we're in a new year, to keep our focus on the Lord and to remember that our God is there to help us through this year and for us to be determined and purposed in our hearts to rely upon the Lord and not to allow ourselves to get burdened and overwhelmed with life. Though there will be those days where life wants to overwhelm us, yet we're already prepared and committed to giving it to the Lord and seeking the Lord's help while we patiently wait for him knowing that he will, he will come through and, and he will help us to have that peace and that rest that we need. Psalm 40 and verse 2, again, David here says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He set my feet upon a rock. I don't know if you've ever felt like you were just about to go under, like you just felt yourself sinking. 
You know, I think about, <clears throat> excuse me, I, think, I always think about Peter. I always think about Peter and Peter walking on water, doing something great no one else did. But even just moments after walking on water, he starts sinking. Sinking beneath the same water he was just walking on top of. Sometimes we feel like we have control of everything. Everything's going smooth. It seems like, you know, we're walking on, on the top of the world. It just seems like, you know, everything's just, it, everything's going right. Everything's just playing out right. And it just seems like, you know what, life is good. Everything's going great. And then something happens. And when something bad happens, we feel like we start sinking. We feel like we're, we're about to drown under the burdens of life. And as Peter was literally Going under the water, he cries out to the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And the Bible records that Jesus is right there and lifted him up. It just reminds me of, of where David says here, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. Because when Jesus lifted Peter up, they walked back to the boat together. There are times in life where we think we have a handle on it. We think, you know what? Life is good. I know exactly what I'm doing. Everything's great. Sometimes a little pride can creep in, and we think, man, I, I did this. This is awesome. I've got a handle on it. And the Lord still wants us to rely upon him, and sometimes the Lord will allow a little trouble in our life to help us to be reminded and to start thinking more clearly and thinking right again. You know what? No, I still need the Lord. I still need the Lord's help. Because could not Jesus have kept Peter from sinking underwater, or at least sinking? Yeah. Can't God keep us from having problems in life, no matter what they are, whether it's the dishwasher stopped working, uh, the battery in the car went dead, something went wrong at work, I mean, whatever. Yeah. But again, we learn through the trials that we can trust the Lord. We learn through the burdens that, you know what? I don't want to carry this load, but I have a God who wants to and says, cast it on me. I mean, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful relationship that we have, and we're just reminded that, you know what, God is the one that will sustain us. He'll bear us up. He will lift us up at times, and he will always support us. He is our support system. And the world has its own support system, and it is good to have somebody that you can count on and someone that you can get encouragement from, but it should never be a substitute for our reliance upon Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Again, who will always be there and is not a single burden that he cannot handle that comes in our life. Psalm 145, verse 14, the Bible says, uh, oh, let's see here, verse 14 says, the Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. There's times in life where we do fall. We're not counting on it. We're not looking to fall. But sometimes we do fall in life and we have a Lord and Savior right there ready to lift us up and to help us. Psalm 94 in verse 18, the Bible says, when I said, my foot slippeth, Thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. It is the Lord's mercies uh, that help us each and every day. Uh, look at Philippians chapter 4. One last verse on this uh, point of the fact that God shall sustain you every day. God will help you and hold you up and lift you up. Even when you fall, we just, we do, we fall at different times. We're not perfect. There's not a single person perfect. There's just times in life where the Lord is right there ready to help us and to lift us up. And those are the times that really do encourage us when we do see the Lord helping us. And we are, we are encouraged in our spirit and in our heart that the Lord knows us. And uh, he's right there always ready to help us and to lift us up and to walk with us. Philippians 4.19 reminds us as... Paul says to the believers at Philippi, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Supply all your need and my need, regardless of what a physical need, 
spiritual need, emotional need, financial need. And whatever the need is, our God is able to supply what we need, when we need it, and we can trust the Lord that we can cast our burdens upon him, and he will sustain us with his peace. He will help us uh, to be encouraged in our hearts and to remain faithful to him, trusting him and walking with him. Look at the last part of verse 55 in verse number 22. Again, he says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And someone might say, well, I'm not perfect. And I'm not talking about being perfect, but righteous, being a child of God. Being a child of God. Being on the Lord's side. Being one that the Lord has come and changed your life and has given you the power, as the Bible says, to become the sons of God, to become the children of God, sons and daughters. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I want you to look at a couple of verses with me. Look at uh, Psalm 16. Psalm 16. You know why God will never suffer the righteous to be moved? He'll never suffer the righteous to be forsaken. He'll never suffer the righteous. To fall from a relationship with him, fall from salvation. He'll never let the devil have his way with you. You know, again, the devil, the best the devil can do is get into the minds of God's people and cause them to think things that are true that are lies, because he's the father of lies. But you think about when he says, he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. In Psalm 16, in verse number 8, David says, I've set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. The Lord's in control. And we've got to remind ourselves the Lord is in control of our life. The Lord is watching over us like a good shepherd, like the great shepherd. And David says something that we all should be able to say I've set the Lord always before me. I mean, my focus is on the Lord. My reliance is on the Lord. My full trust is in the Lord. My dependence is in Jesus Christ because he's always there. He will help me. Look at Psalm 37. <clears throat> Psalm 37 and verse 23 and 24. Psalm 37, verse 23 and 24, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, doesn't say if he falls, it says though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. There's times in life, even in our spiritual walk with the Lord, that we fall. Again, it, that could be a myriad of things. It could be, you know what, we get to a point where we start doubting. I know God can, I just don't know if he will for me. Well, that's a fall. Because we're not fully trusting the Lord. Because you know what, if God saved us, if Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life on the cross of Calvary and died for your sins and my sins, he paid the price. I mean, he went through being scourged, he went through being beaten, he went through being crucified, all of that. So our sins would be paid for, then why wouldn't he help us in anything? And I, I talk to a lot of people that struggle with God helping them because they're trying to think, well, I'm not good enough. I mean, I know that person, I mean, they deserve God to help them because they have a great walk with the Lord and and all of that. And sometimes we even minimize. People will minimize their problems. Say, well, you know, my problem isn't as big as someone going through cancer. You know, cancer is a big problem. It's a big deal. But you know what? Even if you're just financially struggling or you're just struggling with having Bible devotions every day, you're struggling with being 
you know, every day reading your Bible, every day praying. Well, God cares about the little things in our life as much as the big things. Sometimes people think, you know, well, you know, I don't want to bother God with, you know, what's going on in my life because there's so many other people that have bigger issues. That's the wonderful thing about our God. He cares about every single person and every single person's problems in life and what, they're, what they have going on. I'm reminded of the account of J. Iris, uh, who was a ruler of the synagogue in the days of Christ, walking on this earth. J. Iris' daughter of 12 years old was lying sick, dying, and J. Iris leaves his house and goes to where Jesus is to ask Jesus to come to his house and to heal his daughter. So Jesus is going with J. Iris. But then they're interrupted by somebody else that has a problem. Right? The unnamed woman who had an issue of blood, a blood disease, some type of blood disorder for 12 years. So as long as J. Iris' daughter has been alive for 12 years, this woman has been battling this blood disorder for 12 years. And you know the, you know the account in Scripture. She, she just believes that if she can just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she'll be made whole. You know, she didn't really want to, you know, interrupt what he was doing or bother him. Sometimes... You know, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say. Maybe she even thought, you know, what, what, what I'm battling is really insignificant. You know, he, I know Jesus has healed the blind. He's healed the lame. He's even raised someone from the dead. Mine's just a little blood issue, a little blood disorder. But you know what? If it's an issue in your life, Jesus does care about it because it's something that's affecting your life. It's something you're struggling with. But again, as the account goes, the woman, by faith, man reaches out, touches the hem of his garment, and she, the Bible says instantly she's made whole. But Jesus stops because he says that, the Bible says that Jesus perceived virtue had gone out of him. He stops and turns and says, who touched me? And his disciples kind of, you know, what do you mean who touched you? Look at the crowd, you're being thronged, you're being pressed upon, and you say, who touched me? And that's when Jesus says, you know, I perceive virtue has gone out. He's looking around, and the woman comes trembling before him. But notice, he's supposed to be going with Jairus because Jairus' daughter is on her deathbed. But he stops to address somebody else. So he addresses the woman, and obviously the Bible, Bible says Jesus tells her, you know, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. And the Bible says, as he's talking to this woman, some men come from Jairus' house and tell him, your daughter's dead. Why trouble the master anymore? Now, sometimes our enemy gets into our minds and wants us to think, why trouble God about that? He can't do anything about it. It's past what God can do. So these men who say, your daughter's dead, say, don't trouble the master anymore. And I've always thought about that, the fact that they gave Jesus the rightful title master, because he is the master, yet they say don't trouble him because death has already taken hold of your daughter. There's nothing the master can do. What can God not do? What person can God not heal that is sick? What, what is it in our life that we're struggling with, that we're battling with, that we need help with, that God can't help us with? And I love Jesus' response. He, he, he pretty much he blesses the woman and says, your faith has made you whole because she believed Jesus could heal her without Jesus even knowing about it, without even saying a word to her. And Jesus turns to Jay Iris when he hears the men say that, and he turns his attention to J. Iris, he doesn't rebuke the men. I love it. He doesn't waste his time on trying to rebuke those that are saying, don't trouble the Lord. He turns to J. Iris, the Bible says, and says, believe only. Fear not, believe only. And they continue on. And they go to J. Iris' house. You know, Jesus raises J. Iris' daughter from the dead. Because again, what can Jesus not do? But there are times in our life where we're tempted not to go to the Lord, not to trust the Lord. 
And there will be times in 2022 where we're tempted not to trust the Lord, not to rely upon the Lord, not to cast our burden upon the Lord, not to believe that he will sustain me. He will give me the grace that I need, the strength that I need. He will uh, support me and uphold me, and he will encourage me. He's given me of his Holy Spirit to be the comforter, to encourage me. Look, if you would, at um, Psalm 62 and verse 2. Look at verse 1, verse 1 and 2. David here says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation or my help, my deliverance. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And believe me, David was tempted often to be moved because of what was going on in his life. But David knew, David had learned, you know what? The best place to be is right next to the Lord. The best place to be in life is in the will of God, even if it's in the midst of a storm, because we're with the master of the storm. It, it's still, I still love the fact that my name's not written in the Bible, that my life is not penned in Scripture for people to see you know, my struggles and my failures, Sometimes, you know, we like to pick on Peter. We like to pick on those that, you know, I wouldn't have done that. When I think about the disciples, twice Jesus puts them in the middle of a storm. First time he sends them out there by, by themselves. You know, he says, he sends, he sends them away. He says, I'll send the people away. You guys go ahead and go and get in the ship and go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And then there a storm rages and, and they're afraid and they're doing their best to bail themselves out. Jesus comes walking on the water. The second time, Jesus is with them in the boat. I mean, it's a wonderful thing that Jesus, where we fail at different times, that test will come around because God wants us to learn to trust and not fear. He wants us to learn to rest in him and not be anxious. He wants us to learn how to be settled in our spirit so that we're not making the wrong decisions but we're trusting the Lord and waiting upon him. I want you to look with me at 1 Peter chapter 1. Two more places. 1 Peter chapter 1. And 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his Abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Again, just even the resurrection of Jesus Christ just reminds us of the victory that we have because of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Right? We have victory because of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a place prepared for us in heaven. And verse 5, who are kept... By the power of God, through faith, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, you know that nothing can cause you to lose your gift of salvation because you did nothing to gain it. It was a gift from God because of us putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his finished work. So if we cannot lose our salvation and we're kept by the power of God, Again, what is it that he will not help us with? What is it that he will not carry for us? Look at Matthew chapter 11. Again, 1 Peter just reminds us of the fact that no, we are a part of the family of God. We're kept by the power of God because we are his children. And if we're his children, he will take care of us. He will help us. He shall sustain us. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and 30. Earlier we looked at verse 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. <clears throat> you know what? 
That's the wonderful thing about having full trust in God is that you do have an inner peace and rest. You know what it's like to be burdened down with the cares of life, the responsibilities of life, things that you're struggling with. There's not an inner rest. There's not an inner peace when you are being controlled by the things that you cannot control. But when you relinquish that to the Lord and you cast your care upon the Lord and cast your burden upon the Lord, believing that he will carry it and he will support you and he will sustain you, there is an inner peace that you have that, you know what, even though the problem necessarily hasn't been fixed automatically, yet you know that God will take care of it. You know God will help you. And there's that inner peace that, you know what, I can walk with Jesus in the midst of a storm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked with Christ in the fire. They had a peace, though the fire was still raging in the furnace, yet they had an inner peace because they were walking with the Prince of Peace. Though Peter was sinking beneath the waves, yet he had enough sense and faith to cry out to the Lord, Lord, save me, and Jesus lifted him up. I love the fact that when you, when you read these accounts of, of Peter, Peter sinking, when, when Peter cried out to the Lord, Lord, save me, you will not read in Scripture where Jesus says, I don't know, Peter. I mean, you keep, you know, not having enough faith in me. You, you, you keep sinking at different times. No, the Lord was right there and lifted him up, and they walked back. And the storm did not stop raging until they got into the boat. Sometimes we think that if God will take away the problem, then I'll have peace. Then I'll be at rest because there's no more problem. And we do want the problem to go away. We do want the difficulty to go away, the burdens to be lifted. But sometimes the Lord keeps the burden there just a little bit longer so that we learn to walk with him, trusting him, getting our focus off the burden and our focus on the Lord, the one who can help us, the one who will sustain us, the one that will support us because he is our rock. So remember, the Lord shall sustain you. The Lord will help you at different times. Never think that anything in your life is so minimal or too big that you can't go to the Lord with. You can take everything to the Lord. And you have to, and I have to, trust that he will take care of it. He'll take care of it in his timing, the perfect way. And while we're waiting on him to do it, he wants us to continue walking with him, continue fellowshipping with him, continue allowing his grace to work in our life.